Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and I am so excited you're here with me tonight. So tonight's Facebook Live is all about the message of the day. Um, how to teach message of the day, some strategies you can use, tips and tricks, big ideas. And I made a handout for you guys all about message of the day, kind of what I'm gonna go over, which I know I don't normally have handouts, but sometimes um, when there's all kinds of good stuff, I just wanna share it to you. So at the top of this post, you'll find the link for the handout, and you'll also find um, a few other links there's a link um, to all my Amazon favorites, which has um, some really awesome teacher resource books. If you want to learn more about teaching writing, <laughs> teaching writing with your little ones, um, so yeah, there's just more links at the top. So and there's a newsletter sign up and the Facebook group, so that way we can keep talking after this is over. So let's just jump right in. So first of all, what is message of the day? And I know a lot of people do message of the day a little bit different. I just want to say. This is just my way of doing message of the day. Um, this is, I did a, we had to do a form of this um, when I taught um, in the school district for 12 years and then I, I've tweaked it a little bit um, the past couple years based on, you know, the new research that has come out and just, just you know, what, what you learn teaching and reflecting with kiddos. Reflecting about how you teach with kiddos is what I mean. Make sure, if you are just joining me, make sure you go to the top of this post after we're done, not now, after, and grab the handout for tonight so you can have all the goodies and you can just print it double-sided and pop it in your teacher binder. So, oh, and there's also a list at the top of all of my past Facebook Live videos if you wanna watch any of those. I might re reference a couple tonight too. So, what is Master of the Day? And like I said, this is just my way of doing it. So, I do Master of the Day and it's like a shared writing experience I do with my kiddos. So we do it together. Like my board is empty when they come in and we um, think about it, we, we make a picture and then we make words to match and then we reread it. Um, kind of like the short version. So that's kind of what message of the day is. It's basically writing a message about your day. And I know some teachers have it pre-written up on their board and they kind of go over and look at all the different things, pieces of writing and different skills and that. But I actually write with my kiddos and we share the pen. Um, and they help me with the message and they help me write. They come up and help me do it, help me read it, all that good stuff. So that's kind of what I'm sharing about tonight, that style. So where the kids and you write it together, more of a shared writing experience. So when you're doing message of the day, there's a whole bunch of things to think about. Like granted, message of the day probably takes like a max of like five minutes a day, but it's like a mini writing lesson I get every day with my kids. And it's guaranteed time where we're talking about letters, we're talking about words, we're reading, we are doing concept of word, we're doing all these skills. So it's every day, it's like a five minute mini lesson you get. So make sure you're using that time efficiently with your kiddos and you're really putting thought and purpose and intention behind doing mess of the day. Like don't just do it just to get it done. Like it has, there's, oh, I keep shaking this tonight. Sorry guys, I'm talking with my hands a lot. Um, but yeah, so make sure you actually like put thought and purpose and intention in the message of the day because your kids can get so much out of it. And I do not teach um, letter using letter of the week. Um, so this is one of my big strategies we use in my classroom um, instead of um, letter of the week. And I have a whole three part series on how to teach without, how to teach letters and sounds um, in the alphabet without using letter of the week. So again, go to the top of that post and you can watch that three part series. Um, so the big reason, another, like the big, I think most important reason you do to do message of the day is to model writing for your kids and to show them like that writing is important. It's a tool you can use in your life and you want to help them fall in love with writing because writing is powerful. Like they can grow up to be a writer or a blogger or, um, any, you know, a reporter, and you have to write it down usually before you say it. So being a, um, a skilled writer is a really, really important skill. I mean, even sending emails to your boss, um, whatever job you have, like being a writer is really, or being a, you know, a quality writer is really important, being able to get that message across. Um, so we want to help kids fall in love with writing. That way, it's not a chore for them. They're not like, oh, I have to write this email when they get older, or oh, I have to do 
you know, I have to write this. They're like, oh my gosh, I get to write this and I get to express my feelings and my thoughts through, through writing. So we want to help them fall in, write, in love with writing. And so you want to be excited about message of the day. You don't want to be monotone and boring. <laughs> like, like you're just going to lose them. Like they're not going to be engaged and excited. So be excited and help them fall in love with writing. Um, because we also want, another thing we want to do is to, we want our kiddos to see themselves as writers, even a two-year-old, even a three-year-old, even a pre-K, even a five-year-old. We want them to see themselves as writers as soon as they possibly can because even if they're scribbling, even if they're doing random letters, even if they're doing invented spelling, even if they're writing complex sentences when they get to, um, you know, first grade, like we want them to see themselves as a writer at, at the earliest we possibly can. So message of the day, having them share the pen with you, having them help you do the message is a great way to start that process. Um, and it's also a really great way to build their confidence. Um, if you have them come up and you're up and you're right there to support them and you know, you're ready to help catch them if they fall or they make a mistake, you're right there. You can whisper in their ear, you can write, you know, write underneath. And I'll tell you some strategies I use to help kiddos who are struggling when they come up to the board or don't have that confidence. I'll show you, tell you guys that in a minute. Um, but we want to build their confidence because if you're not confident in what you do, you're going to second guess yourself and you're probably not going to like it. So at least that's how I, for me, like I used to hate speaking in front of people and now I practice it and practice it and do all these Facebook lives and now it's fun for me when I used to hate it because I'm confident in doing them and I know the procedure and I just feel like I'm talking with my friend with you guys. So it's just kind of getting yourself confident. So we want them to be confident writers too. And then we want them to know that drawing is just, or the illustrations, is just as important as the writing piece. Because we, in my classroom, we do, when we do message of the day, first they do, we do a picture, and then we put the words underneath. It's just like in a book. So there's an illustration, and then there's words underneath or above or wherever. But it's just like in a book. So make sure you're doing a picture with your message of the day. And my kids love doing the picture or the illustration. They come up and help. Um, I kind of give them as a clue sometimes and you can make it into a game and we'll talk about the picture more in a minute. But one thing you want to be careful of is you want to teach, um, and when you do message of the day, before, when you're doing message of the day, um, you want it to be at their level. And obviously you're not going to be able to hit everyone's level because you have, you know, a bazillion kiddos in your class and they're at all at their own, each individual level. But if you have a pre-K class, or you, let's say you have a three-year-old or a two-year-old class, and you're doing message of the day, you're not going to want to teach sight words, because <laughs> that's going to be way over their head. They're going to get frustrated. They're going to check out, and they're not going to be engaged. So then you're going to have behaviors too, right? And then they're not going to like writing, because that's super hard, because it's way above their level. So you want to be in that zone of proximal development. So it's that sweet spot where... They are, it's at their level, but just a little bit higher um, since you're there kind of to help and support. So you don't want to like do something that is way too hard that's going to be overwhelming and stress them out because then they're going to be stressed and they're going to think writing is stressful. And I know some of you guys are asking or have asked me in the question to do message of the day and I'm actually going to model it and pretend you guys are my kiddo. So I will in just a second. So, and then, like I said, like the mess of the day is like a mini lesson. So you want to use that time intentionally teach. And when I, I, I used to, when I taught for um, the district, I had to write out what skill I was going to teach, like in my lesson plans, like what objective I was working on for mess of the day. And now that I have my own in-home preschool, it's like state licensed and all the good stuff. Um, I don't write it down because I go a lot on... One, what my kiddos did yesterday during journal writing, what they were struggling with. And that's kind of what I hone in on, on, or maybe we played a letter game and some student was struggling with a certain letter or combination of letters. Um, and we'll, you know, work on that during message of the day. Or maybe my kiddos, especially at this point of the year, and they love message of the day, every one of my kids is engaged during message of the day because I make it fun and exciting and we share the pen. And they kind of take over, like right now they're really excited about counting how many words are in a sentence 
And then they like to come up and use the pointer and read the sentence. Like I usually only let like one or two of them do it. Um, but they're really excited about figuring out how many words are in a sentence or if it's a really long word, they're really excited about counting out how many syllables are in a word or how many letters are in a word. Um, so yeah, so what I'm gonna do really quick is I have my whiteboard right here by me and I'm gonna model doing mess of the day and you guys are gonna be my, my kiddos. So, and, oh, I wanna say too, if you, so this is what I have. So I, it's at Lakeshore and I think you can get it on Amazon. Um, you used to be able to, you know that changes sometimes. Just get any kind of big whiteboard. If you don't have one of these big old fancy ones that are outrageously expensive, I think this thing was like $300 and you guys, I got it at a yard sale for like 40 bucks. I was like, pee my pants excited I got this thing so stinking cheap. I was like, oh my gosh. Like I like ran up and like had my kids hold it and everything because I was so excited because it was so cheap. Um, but if you don't have one of these, Take a cheap whiteboard from Walmart and just use that and lean it up against the wall or attach it to your wall um, low, like you don't want it high where the kiddos can't reach, but just put that by the wall. If you have two year olds, um, you can do message of the day, but I would do it on a, a smaller whiteboard and I would have them sit around you. So that way, cause they're littler, you're gonna lose their attention quicker and I would just make it maybe one or two minutes. Um, so you can either do it like that or do it on a big board up here. But you don't have to have a big old fancy easel. You can have just a regular whiteboard you get from Walmart for like five bucks. You don't have to have this crazy fancy thing. All right, so first thing I do is I grab my marker and then, uh, let's see. Oh, I know, I'll do this one. So I'll say, okay, I'm gonna make my picture and I gotta make my picture first and then I make my words. So I'll say, you know what, T today for snack, we are going to have apples and crackers because sometimes my kiddos are really excited when we have a new snack. So sometimes our message of the day is about food and I always make our message of the day about what they're talking about or something that's gonna happen in our day because that means it's meaningful to them. I'm not gonna write you know, some random thought like or fact or something like that because if they're not invested or excited about the message, it, like, it has no meaning for them and writing needs to have meaning to them. So you're teaching that as well. So I'll say, you know, today we're gonna have apples and crackers for snack, okay? I'm gonna draw my, let's see, my message should be, today we are having apples and crackers. Okay, for my picture, I want it to match my words. So oh, I'm gonna draw an apple. What shape is an apple? Oh, it's kind of like a smushed kind of circle with kind of a bump on the bottom. And obviously they would be like calling out and telling me kind of what the shape of an apple looks like. And um, I would say, and I am not the best artist, as you can see. And I, like, I always like say, oh, I want to try that again. Or they'll say, oh, like, make it like this. I, apparently, I, I can't draw a circle tonight. <laughs> um, kind of looks like a pumpkin, but we'll go with it. So, um, and they'll be like, oh, you forgot the stem. So it's also when you're doing, um, it really does look like a pumpkin now. <laughs> I'll, add, I'll add a leaf. Um, when you're teaching the drawing piece, you're all, um, I break it down. It's kind of like a mini directed drawing. So I'd be like, oh, what shape is an apple? Because that's what they're gonna do when they are thinking about their illustrations. They're gonna go, I wanna draw a person. I need to draw a circle head and two eyes. So you wanna model all of that, all that thinking you're doing in your brain or that they would be doing in your brain. You wanna model that all of it out loud, just spew all the information out. So they told you it was a circle and you have a stem and I, they told you to add a leaf. Um, and sometimes they'll be like, oh, are we having red apples or green apples? I'll be like, oh, it's a green apple. So then you can you know, say, oh, I'm gonna color it green. Um, and then um, a cracker. And I'll be like, oh, what? Our, our, our crackers today are the round ones that have salt on them. And I'll say, oh, I'm gonna draw the round cracker like a circle with the salt. And I'm gonna make dots for the salt, that way I remember that that's a cracker. Because if I just draw a circle, that could be a ball, or it could be anything. So I have them add details, which is what we want them to do in their drawing too, right? Whether they're three, or in kindergarten, or first grade, we want them to add those details to those drawings. And I'll say, okay, remember our message is, we are having apples and crackers. And then I'll have them repeat it back to me. We are having apples and crackers. And then I make lines for my words. Um, the kindergarten teachers in my district did this. 
Um, so we um, did it as well. It's also a really great way to help them put spaces between the words. So I'll say, okay, I'm gonna, first I'm gonna make my line. Today we are having, I can't see it, sorry. Today we are having apples. And sometimes you can even like model making a mistake because like, you know, they love that. And I'll be like, today we are having apples and crackers. And they'll go, no, 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 you, Miss Jackie, you have to start, you have to go back to the left side or they'll just say the other side. And I'll go, oh, oops. Oh, well, I made a mistake. I can fix it. And you can model making that mistake and just not getting upset about it and just, you know, keep going. Because some kids, when they make a mistake when they're writing, it's devastating. So you want to model making all those mistakes too because that way when they do it, they'll go, oh, it's fine. I'll just use my eraser. I'll just scribble it out and fix it. So today we are having apples and crackers. And then you can put a period at the end or you can forget it. It depends on what skill you're working on. And I would just add my period. And then I would go, today we are having apples and crackers. And then you can check it. So do the picture, say the message, they say the message, and the lines are optional. You don't have to do the lines if you don't want to. And then I would say, today, today. And they would go, tea, and I would say, oh, Billy, come up and make my tea. Okay, I'm gonna use my other hand so it's, it'll look like, it'll look like there. So I have a pre-K class. So my kiddos are not, they all can't make all the lowercase and all the uppercase yet. But if you are a kinder teacher, you would obviously want them to be like, okay, the first letter's capital, so remember to make that letter capital and the rest will be lowercase. So you wanna tailor it to your kiddos needs. Like for me, if they wrote it a lowercase t, that would be totally fine because my kiddos are three, four, and five. And that's totally okay. We, are, we do not get into capitalization yet. So today, and then I would write the rest. Today, we, E. I hear two sounds in that. W E. And they'd be like, W. And then W E. And then they could go, oh, E. Okay, I'm going to make an E. And if they call out a sound that's wrong, they'll be like, M or P. You can go, does we. And you, if you have an alphabet chart behind you, which you can kind of see mine, um, you can like pull it off and go, does we sound like W E. Does that sound like pumpkin does that have the p at the beginning they're gonna go no and then you can pull down the w card which, and go oh, we does that we sound like watermelon and you're and then they're gonna go yeah it's the same so you can model using an alphabet chart oh sorry if you use alphabet charts in your writing, if you have them in the writing center, if you just have an ABC chart with just letters, you can model using those things. Today we, and then some, if it's a side word, since I'm pre-K, I, I skip over those. Today we are having, and they'll go H, I'll be like, Sally, come up and make an H. And then having, and I would fill in the rest. Today we are having, apples and go ah, apples and then they go a and you can share the pen again and have sally come up or frank or whoever and then you fill in the rest apples and so if you are working on a sight word you can be like oh and is one of our sight words anybody had, remember how to spell that and they would go oh a and b that's and and then you can fill that in apples and crackers crackers and they would go, oh, I hear an R. And you can go, but there's a sound right before it. Do you hear it? Kr. And you can say, oh, that's a blend. Sometimes the letters like to, like to buddy up and kind of make a new sound. So you could say it's actually C-R. And then you would read it all together. Today, we are having apples and crackers. So yeah. And then if you have a pointer, you can have a kiddo come up, and um, then you can have them come up and do it with the pointer. Um, so I usually only spend like five minutes doing um, message of the day. It doesn't take me super long. I don't work on all of those skills. I just wanted to model some of them for you guys. So that's how I kind of do it with my kiddos. And like I said, I don't work on all those skills like I did models for you guys. I'd probably only pick like two or three, and it lasts maybe about five minutes. 
So yeah. All right, so that's the procedure. So you do, you think about it out loud and say, okay, this is what I wanna write about. Um, and then you think about it, make a plan. Then you draw your picture and do the illustration. You say it, they say it. Make a line for each word if you want to. Write it and then you reread it and then you can reflect at the end. You can be like, oh, like that word was really tricky for me. You know what? But it's okay if I don't spell it right. Everything doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so some people are asking like, do I spell it correctly or do I sometimes spell it like phonetically? Um, I do both. It kind of depends on what word it is, what we're talking about. Like if it's um, like cat and they say K-A-T, sometimes I'm like, oh, like C and, C and K, they make the same sound. This time it's K. But sometimes I want to build their confidence, so I will write whatever they say. And sometimes, like let's say, I'm gonna model something else too really quick. So let's say, I would be like, today we are having apples and crackers, and somebody's like, and let's say I have a little lady who is not very excited about writing, she doesn't have any confidence, and I'm like, Sarah, like, what letter do you think? And she's like, Q, and I'm like, oh, okay, Q, what do you think's next? R, L, okay, P, T. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, I love that. And I'll be like, oh look, let's read it everybody. Today we are having apples and crackers. So sometimes I will write it exactly how they spell it, even if it doesn't work. So it just depends on kind of what they're doing, what they're saying, the kiddo's situation, their confidence, what skill I'm working on. Um, yeah, so sometimes I spell it correctly, sometimes we do it um, phonetically. So it, it kind of just all depends. Um, yeah, especially if like it's a tricky one, like the, sometimes I'll skip over that and be like, oh, that's a sight word, that one's tricky, it doesn't, you know, and I'll be like, sometimes words are crazy and they don't make, the letters make different sounds. And you'll learn about that in like second grade. So I'll just fill this one in. Um, and you can learn it as a sight word, like the. And that's just one we have to memorize and keep in our brain because sometimes the letters together, they make weird sounds and it doesn't make sense. And that's okay. And I think, um, like the other day we were doing journal writing and I didn't, she had some big word, this little lady did. And um, I have an Alexa in my classroom, hopefully it doesn't turn on when I said the name. Uh, but I was like, hey, how do you spell? And I asked Alexa. And I think that's okay too. If, if you don't know how to spell everything correctly every single time, which is totally me, if you guys, I use tools to help me and I think that's okay too. If you're, you don't know how to spell a word and it's like Tyrannosaurus Rex and you have to look it up or you have to look it up on your phone or um, using a device, I think that's okay too. Cause then they see that you don't know how to spell everything perfectly every time. And, because nobody's perfect, nobody knows how to do everything. So I think that's okay too. Um, so yeah, and then like I said, model making mistakes because you've all, we've all had that kiddo where they write something and they just shut down because they made a mistake and it's in marker and they can't erase it. So sometimes I won't even model erasing. Sometimes I'll go, I'll scribble and I'll write it above it because sometimes on their papers, they don't have an eraser. So I'll model scribbling it out and just writing it above and saying, you know it's okay that I have scribbles on my paper because it just shows that I'm working really, really hard to be a good writer. And sometimes writers make mistakes and they scribble it out and they fix it. Um, so yeah, so somebody was asking about journals. So I did an entire Facebook Live last year on journals. Um, so if you, again, go to the top of this post and you can um, watch the journal video. There's a link to all of my old Facebook Lives. There's like a bazillion of them. So I just made a list. You can just click it and go watch it. So yeah. Basically modeling, editing when I'm going back and rereading and fixing things. So yeah, so exactly, we wanna model editing, we wanna model making mistakes. Um, Cheryl asked, do I do message of the day during circle time? So I do message of the day during circle time and I do it first and it's like five minutes and then we read the book. Now I do calendar, which you, I have a linear calendar which you can see me, behind me. Um, I do that at the beginning of music. That way my circle time, I can do message of the day and I can read a book and I don't lose them after, because my circles are about 15 minutes right now. Um, I'm gonna slowly, like hopefully get them up to like 25 by the end of the year. Um, this just depends on their attention that day. Um, but yeah, so I do calendar at the beginning of music because music is at the beginning of our day. And then I do message of the day with, with um, circle time. 
So yeah, thanks for that question. That's a good question. Um, let me see. I'm just reading my notes. And again, if you guys are just joining me, I have a handout for this Facebook Live. So go to the top and you can download it and print it and put it in your teacher binder um, to help you guys out. So um, and I told you guys about share the pen, which is basically when you hand the marker to a kiddo. Now, if you have a kiddo come up and they're like, I don't know how to make a K. And you can go, that's okay, I can help you. So I'm gonna go back over here. So let's say they don't know how to make a W. You can do one of two things. You can make it under it, and, and then you, know, you can go, it goes down, up, down, up, and then they can make it, or if they're three and they can't make a W, that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be up here writing. Like Just because they can't make letter tip does not mean they should be writing. They can scribble it, that's okay. I know that would drive some people bananas, but say, you know what, everybody's working on making letters and that's how he's making his W right now. And I love how he tried, that's awesome. Um, or you can write it in a different color and then that kiddo can trace it. Or you can do hand over hand is where they hold the pen and then you hold it behind it and you like guide their hand. So it's kind of um, one of the three things. So that way when, when you are sharing the pen, um, they can be successful even if they don't know how to spell. But, or let's say they, they came up and they're like, oh, I wanna, I wanna, I, oh, I know, I know having starts with, and they get up here and they freeze because everybody's looking at them, it gets quiet, who knows. Say, hey, who can help, who can help Tyler out? Having, what sound do you think it is? So if they come up here and freeze, Help, have your peers help them because when they're writing or when they're at the writing table or doing journals, you don't want them to just not know not know an answer and freeze. You want them to go, oh, I, I'm going to look. You know, you can say, oh, do you want to look at the alphabet chart or do you want to ask a friend for help? Um, so model those strategies of what to do when you're stuck. Because, you know, I look on Alexa. <laughs> Alexa helps me when I don't know how to spell. Or maybe, you know, they get out an alphabet chart. So you can model using strategies to help you when you get stuck. So that's another fun way. Oh, and then leave it up. So I leave up my message all day. So you can see it. So I also have down here, I don't know if you can see it. Let me move it up. I have, we were, have been playing this game as a transition. Um, so what I do is I just move it up, um, but I leave, I would leave, I'm talking, you can't see it. So I would leave message of the day here. That way they can reread it if they want to later in the day, or maybe they want their parents to reread it, um, whatever they want. Um, but, but just leave it up so they, they can reference it during the day if they want to. And that way you, they know too that you value the writing and it's important. Like you don't just do it and erase it. Like it's gone. Like who cares? Moving on to the next part of the day. <laughs> um, like just leave it up. It's not gonna hurt anything. And if, if um, like I have parents come in my classroom to do drop off and pick up so they can come in and they can see your writing and they, you can definitely tell like some of their writing and their scribbles and things don't make exact sense. Well, you're modeling also to parents that their writing does not have to be perfect either because we all know that some kiddos, um, parents, like have these super high un unrealistic expectations and it's not on purpose. It's just because they don't know any better. Maybe it's their first kiddo and they're not, they don't realize that a three-year-old is supposed to scribble and write random sentences or write random words and that, 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 that's their writing and that's awesome. Um, so it's, you can also use it as a teaching tool too. For parents. Um, oh, somebody asked about these alphabet charts. So these alphabet charts are in my TBT store. These are in the journal pack. And then my alphabet chart up here, it's backwards for me now, sorry, when I'm when I had to flip it. So this alphabet chart <laughs> up here, that is in my TBT store. Um, it's in the decor pack, and I have it with a rainbow border, and I have it without a rainbow border. That's simple. If you don't, if you're not, if you don't want a lot of colors, or maybe your kiddos can't handle lots of color in your classroom. So, um, Tara said, "What about using a chart paper and saving it as a class book?" Um, I think a chart paper is great, but if you are going to make it into a class book, it's going to be like this big, and they can't see. Especially if you have a kiddo who 
hasn't they have his eyes tested yet and maybe can't see very well and nobody knows that um because you know what happens at this age right sometimes we don't know they can't see or we think they can't see but we haven't figured it out completely yet um but so i would make it on like big chart paper like this big chart paper like giant that way oh sorry that way they can see you or even i moved it back too quick or even this like half size chart paper but i would do it big that way they can see you if you want to make it into a class book what you can do is take a picture of it and then print the picture from your phone or your computer or whatever and so if you want to make it into a class book yes turn it over so this is the message of the day that we modeled so you'll have to watch back so i i um i went through and i actually modeled how to do message of the day so yeah so you'll have to go back and watch if you're just joining us um, so yeah, so share the pen, make sure you're doing those pictures to teach them how to draw all the things. And you will be amazed at how, when they go to the art center or when they're writing or doing their journals or whatever, you'll be so surprised when they start to draw a person and you'll hear them talk out loud. Um, they'll do that self-talk that you do during rest of the day. They'll be like, oh, I need to draw an apple, an apple's a circle. I'm gonna make my circle and I need a leaf <laughs> because they talk out loud all the time and it's awesome. When you're doing the writing process, you are, you're modeling everything and you're problem solving as a writer, you're modeling all the things that they need and all the skills they need when they go to journal writing. And I say when they go do, when I say independent writing, during kindergarten you have internet, or, I'm oh, sorry, I was reading the comment and I was talking at the same time, sorry. So when they're doing independent writing in kindergarten, it's probably during like a writer's work top, writer's workshop, or it's um, work on writing, you know, one of, the, one of your centers. When I say independent writing for preschool, it could be journal time, it could be if they're writing at their writing table, it could be if you're doing a small group writing experience. So you don't, they're not writing as much in preschool and pre-K, um, but I think it's really important to give them those experiences um, just to write. And when we do journal writing, they get to write about anything they want. Um, it's just totally their option because like I said, like message of the day, I never plan it because it's about something we're gonna do or something they're talking about that morning because I want it to be meaningful for them. And because the, otherwise, why write? Like why write down facts? Like unless they're obsessed with polar bears and then you can write a polar bear fact, right? Um, so I, on the handout, I have a whole bunch of skills that you can work on during message of the day. So you can do, you can work on letter identification um, just by, you know, you writing it or they writing it, they're, you or them writing it and then say, oh, look, there's a T. It goes line down and then line across. You can work on letter formation. Um, during that, you can work on letter sounds and you can work on beginning sounds, middle sounds or end sounds. Um, you can do, um, you can model invented spelling. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You can model just making just the sounds you hear. And sometimes when my kiddos are, you know when they go switch from that stage to writing tons and tons of letters to writing one letter for each word, they're just doing that initial sound. I will model that. So let's say I'm gonna model another sentence. So let's say um, it is cold because it's cold. So I would write it is cold and let's pretend i already did like the picture um and then they would say it is cold and you'll go it eh. oh i it is and they may say z is cold K, cold they may say k and i'll go it is cold sorry <laughs> so it is cold so like you're just kind of doing what they're doing. So, because I think that's a that's a big step in a, um, a preschooler or kinder or pre-K kiddos, like writing, when they go from writing all those letters that don't make sense and they go down to like one letter that makes sense, that just initial sound for each word. So model that during your message of the day. If your kiddos are struggling with that or they're like self-conscious about it, model it during message of the day and in no time, your kiddos will be writing those initial sounds like, crazy and they'll be excited and they'll be have that confidence kind of built back in because that, that's when their writing looks very different because it goes from having so many letters on the page that they just fill it up right to like one letter so yeah 
Um, you can also work on rhyme, like after you do message of the day, and somebody's like, oh, apples, baffles. And if somebody, you know, let's, let's make a list of rhyming words that rhyme with apples. Oh, do you notice that? And you can make a list like underneath. It doesn't have to be, you can make a list like right down here. Um, you can make a list right down here of rhyming words and you can talk about, oh, look, I just noticed one, 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 look at these rhyming words. You see how all the endings are the same and the beginning letters different or the beginning two are different. So you can notice rhyming words. You can do syllables. Um, say, oh, look, that's a really long, look, helicopter, helicopter. Oh, that's a really long word. It's going to need a really big line because it has a lot of letters in it and so many sounds. Um, so you can model syllables, long words versus short words. And then all those other concepts of print, like starting on the left side and going across in that sweep. Um, you can work on concept of word. So when you're reading, you're pointing to one. I should just leave it. You're pointing to one. Today we are having, so pointing to one word instead of today we are having apples. <laughs> kind of like when they count, right? Um, and just so you know, if they probably don't have one-to-one -one correspondence in math yet, they're probably not going to have it in writing either. Um, somebody's asking, would I correct these words down here? So no, I wouldn't. Um, if that's what, if that's a skill I'm modeling, if I'm modeling using that initial sound for, um, to represent my word, I wouldn't, I would leave it exactly like that. That way when they go do their writing, they're confident because, you know, oh, Miss Jack, you know, Miss Jackie does it, my teacher does it. If she does it, then that mu it must be okay, right? They're building up that confidence that their writing's looking a little bit different now. And this, if you can't do this, then, like I said, this is just how I do it. Um, and it's based on their writing. So if, you, you know, it, somebody said, like, they may not be able to do it in high school. I don't know, because I've never used that program. So you'll have to check all of it out. But... Yeah, definitely ask because it's very powerful when you are modeling what they're doing and they're writing too. And I wouldn't do this like for weeks. Like I would do it like three or four times and then go back to normal, normal writing. Um, yeah, so. So you can work on concepts of print. You can talk about what a letter is, what a word is. You can also go through and circle things. Like if you have a lot of, um, and this is kind of like a letter, you can just go, oh look, like the, like the T is one letter, and then what's the word that, that, what, you know, what word is it? And you can go, oh, so today is the whole word, and then you can even get another color and mark what the sentence is. So you can talk about what, what's a word, what's a letter, what's a word, what's a sentence. Um, you can talk about um, putting spaces between your words. You can talk about, obviously that would probably be more for kindergarten. Um, if you're in kindergarten, you can work on the capitalization, you know, capital at the front, um, capital, capital letter first, and the rest is lowercase. Um, you can add punctuation. And don't be afraid to make your message of the day a question. Because um, when I had them repeat it, when I, I did this at like last week, I think maybe or a week before, um, we did our message of the day and it was a question and they were just answering me. I'm like, oh no, that, that's our, our message today. Will we have inside recess or something? Um, because I didn't know the answer yet. Um, so that was our, our message. And then at the end, I had, I'm like, well, it's a period is for a sent, like a statement. And, you know, we're asking a question. Will we have inside recess today? Because we're going to have to check the weather. So you're going to put a question mark. And you can introduce question marks and exclamation points. And even if your preschoolers are not using exclamations and questions and periods correctly, at least they know they exist. That way when they go to kindergarten and they have those higher level skills, then they'll start using them appropriately. Okay? All right. So, yeah. So that is... All about message of the day. I'm gonna go through some books that other some teacher resource books that I love. To, if you want to learn more about writing with your little learners, and somebody's asking for a question of the day about question of the day. So I do question of the day, and my classroom is a morning part of their morning routine, and I have an entire um, video on that. So if you want to watch all about my question of the day, go to the top of this post, and you can watch that. So some of my favorite books, and in the handout at the bottom, it, it says take you to Amazon, and um, there's a link and it'll take you to my Amazon storefront and click on teacher resources and all these books will be there. Um, so that way if you want to like, if you're curious and you're really excited and you just want to like 
you know, learn more about writing with little learners. This one is awesome. It's called Literacy Beginnings by Fontness and Pinnell, which, you know, they're the reading and writing gurus. They're amazing. And this book is really awesome. Um, another one that I love is Engaging Young Writers by Matt Glover. This is awesome. And again, these are, I'll put the links after this, but if you go to the top of this post to my Amazon storefront is up there too. And then Words Their Way by So words their way for, and, the, and I, I got, there is a pre-K one. So do the pre-K one if you're in pre-K and then K. And they have a whole series if you're K or higher. Um, there's a whole bunch of different books in this series. Um, if you, like there's ones on vocabulary and stuff for little learners. And then I forgot to grab this one, but I also, um, there's also No More Letter of the Week. Um, that one's an also a really good book. And again, my Amazon links are at the top and you can find that up there. What is the difference between message of the day and question of the day? So message of the day, we it's like a shared writing. So we're writing it with, it. they're writing it with me and we're modeling all the writing things. So question of the day here and I will. So this is question of the day. So the question is already on there and they're answering yes or no. Like right now it's, do you have the letter M in your name? And actually down here are pointers, so that way they can help develop that concept of word and they can point as they read the message and then they answer it. Um, and this is in my TBT store if you wanna grab it. Um, it's really, really powerful. Parents love it, kids love it. They're excited to answer it every day. It's just part of their morning routine. So you can see how this is different than this. So this message of the day we're writing together question of the day is already done and they're just reading it. Thanks you guys so much for watching tonight. And if you want to keep talking about question of the day or message of the day and question of the day, all the stuff, and you um, were signed off, go ahead and hop over to the Facebook group and we can keep talking about it over there or some amazing teachers over there can help um, answer your questions. Or if you even want to go to the, after you do your message of the day with your kids tomorrow, sh pop it in the group and like show us your message of the day. Like that would be awesome. I love to see um, what everybody else does and their setup and all of that good stuff. So you guys have a fabulous night and I will talk to you guys next week.